What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode, this is episode number 78 and we're starting today's episode off by finding out how badly Christian Pulisic was injured and thankfully it's not a serious injury, it's a concussion for Pulisic, he'll be done for four weeks, he'll be out for a month, he'll miss our Champions League group opener and probably all of our games in September plus our final one of August away at Villa Park and for Pulisic two goals on the opening day at Bramwell Lane, yep done for a month and I was sitting there thinking this is so typical. I mean, I, I literally just talked about how we had such great depth in the winger role and how I didn't need to sign a new winger this season. So I loaned out Harvey Vale and I <laughs> loaned out Marcel thinking, yeah, we got plenty of depth in the, in the wide midfield role. And now I've loaned out two players and one player's down for a month. Typical, absolutely typical. But Callum would, of course, step in as our starting left wing whilst Pulisic is down. And you know, I'll be pleased about that as well to get a little bit more game time this season, at least in the early stages of it. Still, uh, we had a bit of a haul as well, our young midfielder. I turned it down. It was from FC20. I didn't think that was too unrealistic, to be fair, FC20. Uh, but in the end, I think an English club would be a bit more realistic. So I turned it down. And then we saw the draw for the Champions League group stage. Where Chelsea have got Villarreal, Benfica and Shakhtar Donetsk as well. Yep, my first Champions League group as manager. And we got Unai Emery's Villarreal, a very good Benfica side. And Shakhtar Donetsk as well, who are no joke. That's actually quite a tough group there. That's actually quite a tough. Benfica have got some really good players and some great youngsters, as we know. A tradition of fantastic youngsters. As Liverpool put in a massive bid for Kai Havertz. No, he's going nowhere. But yeah, that's going to be tough there. Benfica have got some great youngsters, as we know. A rich history of producing fantastic young talent. Some of which still in the game. And I should say still, in, uh, still at Benfica in the save. They've also got Tap Sobel, one of my big transfer targets. The big Burkina Faso international at centre-half as well. Who's in the prime of his career right now. Obviously Villarreal, do we say any more? Champions League semi-finals this year. Knocking out Bayern and Juventus on the way to facing Liverpool. Put up a great fight in the second leg during the week as well. Obviously, they were trailing 2-0 from the first leg where they were very tepid at Anfield. Very, very, yeah, timid. Timid is probably a better word. Timid at Anfield. But uh, first off, of course, you know, battle back to tied on aggregate 2-2. Uh, Liverpool's quality, of course, shone through in the end in the second half. The, the characters really showed up for Liverpool in the second half. Klopp even talked about it in the interview, you know, in the first half. They just, I think they were just taken back by the occasion. But the second half, they, they really went out via Real and a better team over two legs, one in the end. But even so, via Real is still a top European side under Unai Emery whose record in Europe speaks for itself and you know Shakhtar Donetsk that's going to be a tough one as well taking on the Ukrainian side there so that's quite a tough group for our first ever in the Champions League, uh, Champions League. I'd still say we're favourites to get through it and probably top it as well but I certainly don't think it's going to be routine, if you will. Even so, for the first game and the only game of today's episode, Steven Gerrard's Aston Villa away at Villa Park. And I mentioned before, this is a ground I just cannot stand going to. There are certain grounds in FIFA career mode where I just never seem to play well at. Villa Park is one of those. So I wasn't looking forward to this. Out of the first three fixtures, even though we had Spurs at home, I still thought it to be the toughest for me. And it proved to be that way as well. We fell behind just past the hour mark. It was a brilliant through ball as well as Aston Villa took the lead. And they could have gone tuning up as well. A fabulous save by Edouard Mendy. Low down to his right. Kept us. Still trading by one. But Aston Villa were going for the kill, man. They were getting chance after chance after chance. And we were really, really struggling. I was penned in my own half. Even with six minutes to go, we were still down by a goal and I couldn't get out. A corner for Aston Villa was caught by Mendy and we had one chance to come on the counter. Edouard kicks it long. Martinez with the first time flick back finds Tomori. It's a brilliant one-two between the pair. Lautaro has one man to beat. He ball rolls around him, rolls it across to Tammy Abraham off the bench and he says, Gaffer, bench, bench, you want me on the bench this season? I scored 20 goals in the league last year. One of the top scorers in the league. The top scorer for the team. And one of the best assist makers in the league as well. You want me off the bench? Well, that goal right there proves I've got a dilemma on my hands. Martinez was part of the build-up for the goal. And bagged the assist as well. 
But who do I start in this team? I really don't know. No respect for Tammy back at Villa Park. The place he had a loan spell with, of course, a few years ago. But the late leveler from Tammy off the bench ensures we do maintain our unbeaten record, which stretches all the way back to January as well during last season. We haven't actually lost a game since January last year. But a 1-1 draw, Tammy bails me out. And in a game where I played horrendously poorly. I mean, I'll be totally honest here. I was all over the shop in this game, and I'll be honest, probably deserved to lose that one, to be fair. Had it not been for Mendy, I probably would have done so. But Tammy off the bench rescues me in the end, and Abraham ensures we do start the season off without a loss. Poor performance, bailed out by last year's top scorer. And I've got a question for myself. Who do I start? You know, I don't know who do I start. You know, sleepless nights about this, man. It's got to be Tammy or Lautar, and they both can't start together. I just don't know. Still following out, as you can see, uh, the transfer deadline day came around. We had around 60 mil to work with on deadline day, so I did want to sign uh, one or two players to help fill the squad out, because at the moment... We, we don't have much of a concern in terms of the quality we got in the first 11 and on the bench too. But there's not that much quality in the reserves, if you will. And if we are to compete on multiple fronts this year, try and retain our domestic double and win the treble, win the Champions League like the board have asked, then we need to get more quality and depth and more numbers for the squad as well. We loaned out Victor Asenjo to AC Milan, ironically, talking about a lack of squad depth, and I've loaned someone else out. But I said to Asenjo he was going to get loaned out this season because he needs first team football. 18 years old, 77 rated, but he's third choice left back in this team behind Q Carrera and Chilwell. He needs game time. He'll get it alongside Marcel at the San Siro. So, as we had 60 mil on transfer deadline day, I said, right, I looked at the squad, I looked at the reserves and said, okay, all right, let's get some squad depth, shall we? Let's improve our squad depth and get more numbers in the reserves and some good young quality as well. So I looked at the squad, I thought, what positions can we do with strengthen in terms of depth? Well, full back primarily. At right back, we've got Reese James, we've got Tariq Lamptey as well. We could do with a third choice. And I don't know what this guy's doing at Barcelona. From Rochdale to Wolverhampton Wanderers to... Barcelona? Yeah, I just don't see it, really. Luke Madison is now under Xavi stewardship at Barca, and I don't know why. It makes no sense. So, I actually wanted Nathan Patterson, but I thought for realism here, Madison would make more sense, because... <laughs> What's he doing at Barcelona? Could see him at Chelsea, but not at Barcelona. So, yeah, Madison is going to come back to England and come back to the Premier League. And it's, you know, I talked about it before. It's it's important to get players away from clubs where you couldn't see them at in real life. I, can you see Luke Madison at Barcelona? I really can't. So, Madison uh, is now returning to England. He's here at Stamford Bridge. I love the glitch in the negotiations there. But Madison is here. And, you know, obviously, since coming out of the Rochdale Academy, he started, I think, at 15 years old as a, a Rochdale player. And obviously he moved on to uh, to Wolves as well. Having loan spells too. Hopefully he kicks on with his career. We haven't really heard of him much over the past couple of years. But he's now at Stanford Ridge as our third choice right back. And also I did get my third choice emergency goalkeeper as well. I talked about it. I said I was going to sign someone on a free transfer. Just because there's no point in paying a transfer fee for a goalkeeper who won't play this season. But it's just there for the realism. Chelsea as we know over the years. They like their veteran goalkeepers in the reserves. Your Rob Greens. Your Willie Cass. Caballeros, Hilario, do you remember him? Or well, how about this guy? Will Norris! <laughs> Will Norris of Burnley! Yep, released by the Clarets after their relegation last season. And I quite like that to be fair as well. You know, Norris, 32 years old, he's got Premier League experience and he worked with one of our current goalkeepers, Nick Pope. He was understudy for Nick Pope at Burnley, even though he's only a year younger. So, yet yeah, Norris is in on a free transfer. And like I said, for realism, you know, every every top team's going to have three goalkeepers in the first team. If it's, you know, just a youngster out of the academy, they'll have, they'll have a third-choice goalkeeper. So, you know, for realism, it just made sense to have a third-choice myself. But I didn't want to spend the budget I had on a third-choice goalkeeper who won't play. So, Will Norris, I thought, was the perfect fit there. Released by Burnley. It, it, you know, obviously, English as well helps with the homegrown training nation quota for the European squad registration rules. And, of course, he worked with Nick Pope as well. So, I guess, in terms of realism, it's not too far-fetched, if you will. It's like, you know, Lee Grant returning to Manchester United, for example. I don't know. But even so, yeah, Norris is in. Uh, we also sold Reece. I signed Reese Devine, sorry, from uh, Benfica. Uh, we picked him up, obviously, uh, released by Manchester United, and must have been, and joined Benfica. Funny enough, we've seen some young English players go to Portugal in the past few years. Uh, do you remember Josh Tymon? The young left-back from Stoke had a bizarre little loan spell at Family Cow before he was recalled back in the winter. 
bizarre. Well, this is another English left back now in um, in Portugal. Reese Devine, who we've brought back to England from his little stint in uh, uh, Portugal. Obviously, Marcus Edwards going out to Portugal as well. So young English players not afraid to uh, travel to Portugal. We've brought Devine back though, and I did want to sign a new backup striker as well. Now, obviously, we've got Martinez and Abraham, but I wanted a third choice too, just in case Jong Sang Bin isn't that great in limited minutes this season. The one I really wanted was that new gen Uruguayan, just because it reminded me of Roberto Gutierrez, the goal machine. But Munchen Gladbach not prepared to let him go for anything under the 60 million mark, which we just didn't have the money to pull off. So I left him there for realism, probably the right thing to do as well, because third choice here at Chelsea or first choice at Munchen Gladbach, yeah, probably going to choose to stay at Bruce Munchen Gladbach. To be third or fourth choice here, compete with Jong Sang Bin. But but I did decide to sign this guy, and I, I must say, I really like the look of this guy as well. Now, I know all about him because we gave him a pro deal as Southampton manager. Yep, last season we signed Hector Busquets and Marcel, our best academy graduates. But we had several players in the U team that had high potential and a decent starting overall. And this was one of the best. Jasper Whitehouse, 20 years old, 77 rated. And i got to say, this guy looks like a top, top forward for the future. Only 20 years old, already 77 overall. He's got the exciting prospect tag. He's a left-footed player. He's got four-star, four-star. He's reasonably quick with good stamina. But you look at the technicals there, what jumps out of you straight away? 85 finishing. He's also got 75 attacking position as well. And there's no doubt about it, he's an inside forward on the right. This guy looks the real deal. Now, I'm going to get his attacking work rate up to high first, and then I'll convert him to right wing. So I'm going to take this in stages. First, I'll give him the wide midfield development plan. That'll get the attacking work rate up to high, and then I'll convert him to a right winger in this team. But yeah, he looks really, really solid, I must say. I'm very, very excited about him. And as we were closing out transfer deadline day, I did decide to make one more signing to make it five on the day. And you know I really wanted this guy back. Oh, can't wait to get this guy back at some point. Because I'm definitely bringing him back at some point. But not this season. A little bit out of my transfer budget. Conor Gallagher moving on to her to Berlin. Successful loan spell at Crystal Palace. Now he's at the Olympia Stadion. I want to bring him back like we brought back so many Chelsea Youth Academy grads already. But just a little bit out of our price range for this window. Having said that, I did bring in a new midfielder for the squad. And this guy, to be fair, looks pretty decent. Uh, a young French attacking midfielder on the free agents list. I saw him last year on the free agents list. No one's taken a punt on him yet. Don't know why, but I'm going to. It's Pierre. Yeah, Henri. Can he finish like Thierry? Well, I guess we'll find out. He shows great potential. 75 rate to 20 year old. The only concern for me is the low, low work rate. Does he have a problem with work ethic, perhaps, with the low, low work rate? Maybe that's why no one wanted him. I don't know. But, of course, the development plans will get his attacking work rate up from low to high. He's pretty quick. I think he could probably play as an inside forward in this team on the left-hand side. But I want to operate him through the middle. We don't have an attacking midfielder to replace Mason Mount. Most of our midfielders are more players that sit deeper. But now we do. So, whilst the window might not have been as busy as last year's where he rebuilt the Chelsea side, it was Still a big one. We spent over three hundred and five million pounds on bringing our team together and making it better for this season, filling out the squad depth on transfer deadline day and signing our replacements for the aging Lukaku, De Vray, and also Kante as well. And I've got to say, I'm buzzing with how this window went. You'll see with Chelsea, we left a little bit of money in the budget to play with on January if we choose to do so. There's around 27 million remaining, but I might just keep that until next season and carry it over unless we need to make change in January. But you look at the team now, Rice coming in to replace Kante, Bastoni coming in to replace De Vray, Martinez already now 90 overall to replace Lukaku, and of course, in the reserves as well, we filled out the squad. Our third choice goalkeeper in Norris's emergency cover for the realism, Devine and Madison, two young fullbacks, then you've got youngsters in Henri, and also Whitehouse as well to watch for the future. I've got to say, heading into this season, I was kept on as Chelsea manager and they've asked me to win the treble this season. And I knew if we were going to have a chance of doing that, we had to start replacing those seniors and also make our squad stronger in terms of depth. 
I give myself a 10 out of 10 for this window. I really do. I love how it looks. Bastoni, four ratings higher than Stefan de Vray and several years younger. Martinez, now two ratings higher than Lukaku. Now he's up to 90 overall. Several years younger and... We got him for less than what we sold Lukaku for. Declan Rice, my number one target. We got him on the first day to replace the aging N'Golo Kante and filling out the squad with good young talent as well. I've got to say, I'm really liking how this squad is looking and start the season off undefeated after our first three games. A draw at Villa Park, rescued by Tammy Abraham. Still a big decision who starts most of our games up top, but... A good start for Chelsea this season. The pressure, the expectations on me from day one. But I couldn't have made that bad of a start. Yep, three games in, in third place. Two wins and a draw. Our Champions League group drawn as well. I suppose the only negative is Ginger Pulisic. Other than that though, I'm really liking this Chelsea team. And I'm going to give this treble a really good go this year. Tough, no doubt about it. But I'll be doing my absolute best in my first year in the Champions League. But that will in today's episode of the Realistic Crimmer, guys. Big fan. You've watched it. enjoyed it. If you want to drop a like. Most of you all have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for next episode very soon. Featuring our first ever Champions League game. with a save against. Virial very soon.